Hi, it's Sarah from Dolls and Daydreams, and today on Sock Stories, we're going to be turning these fluffy pair of dollar store socks into a cute little black cat right now. I found these lovely fluffy pair and ever so sparkly pair of socks at the Dollar Tree in fact, but you can use any pair of fluffy socks. Turn the sock around so that the opening is at the bottom and the toe is at the top. We're then going to open up the sock, flattening it on the table uh, so that the heel is right down on the tabletop and on the back. This is going to be your head right up by the toe and your body is going to be coming down right where the heel is. That's going to be the little bum of your cat and here we're going to cut these in between and this is going to be our legs. Now, first of all, we have to turn the sock inside out. And then we're going to lay it back down on the table so that you can actually start making the pattern for your cat. So flatten it out. Uh, obviously, we can't iron it. So just keep it nice and flat on your table. Grab your paper and let's just draw a rough sketch of a leg. You've got to remember where the heel is. So try and do it to that length and there you have it. Very, very easy, very quick. I'm sure you're able to do it yourself. But if you're not, don't worry, I'm going to have a whole load of these pattern pieces that I will scan and put on my website. Please check the description below for a direct link. So here's the bottom and there are the legs. Now, when placing our pattern piece on the sock, we need to remember that we want the top of it just where the bottom is going to be so that's where the heel of the sock is and the toes are going to be right down the bottom. Now that opening has elastic on it so we're going to actually sew just slightly on the inside of that elastic. We don't want the elastic really but I don't want to cut it off at this point because I have a distinct feeling this sock is going to shed everywhere. Pop a couple of pins in to keep your pattern piece in place and either hand sew around the outside edge because of course the edge along the side of your sock has already been stitched together. So we're going to sew around the outside of it and then we can either do that by hand, the back stitch, or by using our sewing machine. Now I went ahead and did both of my legs. Um, as you can see, that's one of them. Well, you probably can't see because I used black. So this made it very, very difficult, but I can actually feel where it is. And so I then um, cut up between the legs. Now we're going to cut up a little bit higher. There's going to be a hole there. That's going to be our turning hole and our stuffing hole. Don't worry, um, we'll be sewing that up later but our legs are going to be nice and secure because of our stitches from earlier. Turn your body through the hole, followed by each leg. This material made it really easy because it's super stretchy. Other socks might be a little bit tricky, so I do recommend hemostats um, and a paintbrush. Okay, let's gather our supplies and let's get stuffing. So I always recommend that you fluff your stuffing before you start. It makes it much easier and uh, you can manipulate it much better inside your teddy or dolly. You're going to need a lot of stuffing. I can't stress how much. See, this is just for the body, not even for the legs. <laughs> so let's get stuffing. So the key is we're going to make a round ball. This is going to become our head. So I want you to constantly sort of make a ball shape in the top of your sock, in the toe area, and sort of squish it around. And uh, you want it sort of the size of a tennis ball, but you don't want it as firm, obviously. You do want a little bit of stuffing in the body also. Using the end of a bristle brush, uh, this is an old paintbrush, really helps maneuver the stuffing around. It doesn't look too comfortable for kitty cat, but I can assure you, it will make a much round, more rounded head for you in the long run and get it into the correct shape that we want ultimately for the head. So this is actually looking really good. I'm liking this and it's pretty firm <laughs> as you can see. And I'm looking at the proportions of the body 
and they're kind of exact now. You basically just want the head and the body to be sort of the same size. So now I'm going to take my thread, I've double knotted the end, and I'm going to take it on the back of the sock, this is the, the side where the heel is, and I'm going to sink that knot in there and do um, a couple of stitches in place just to get it really nice and firm. And now we're going to work our way around the sock. Now remember, all our stuffing is in the toe. So we are basically creating the neck of the kitty cat. This is a very simple straight stitch. You don't have to do it very close together. Um, you can do it, you know, very, very large stitches because we're going to go around twice. Now we're at the back of the doll again, and we're going to start pulling our thread tightly. And you can already see a nice circular shape. That's our head. We're going to keep going on around the neck, but each half of the body, we're going to give it another tug, another little cinch in, again, creating that neck. Obviously, we don't want it to be too thin because we don't want it to be a really wobbly, wobbly neck, but uh, you'll be able to see that the neck is forming now. The head is looking nice and round. You can give it a good old squish to keep its shape. And uh, I'm actually becoming pretty happy with this shape now. So you'll, you'll just be able to tell when your neck is completed. Again, you don't want it too skinny. You want some stuffing in that neck area still. You still want it to be nice and solid. This really is personal preference, but I'm really happy with this now. Right, given a nice little cinch, this is probably our last one, and I am going to double knot it in the back um, of the head and of the neck, and then I'm going to hide my thread inside the head itself. Snip off the tail, and then we are done. Make sure he's in a nice shape, or she, and uh, let's continue stuffing the body. We want that tum-tum nice and plump. Fluff your stuffing up and start stuffing on the side of the stomach. You want your tummy to be nice and rounded and your back to be flat. Add a little bit more stuffing into the bottom area because this will help your kitty cat sit up later on. You always need more stuffing than you think. Okay, let's get stuffing with the legs. Now I love hemostats and um, I like the paintbrush for the legs. You can really maneuver the stuffing right down into the feet. Now the way I had drawn up the little pattern piece was that the feet themselves were going to be quite large and bulbous. So the key here is we're going to want a nice big ball of stuffing all the way down into the toes and the feet. As you can see, it's already looking nice and round. The great thing about this kind of fabric, these socks, is it's incredibly forgiving. So even if you were a bit wonky in your sewing, don't worry, you can really manipulate the leg and the shape of the foot just by pushing your stuffing around. And this is where hemostats or a really nice uh, bristle paintbrush helps. Obviously I've sped this part up but you can really take your time shaping your legs. You want them to match and look equal. And of course, it will always take way more stuffing than you expect. Right, these are looking lovely and equal. Um, you can really tell the shape is curved. It's really nice. This fabric is very forgiving. You could whip stitch this hole shut. However, I would prefer the ladder stitch, but I have a whole video which I will link to on the ladder stitch. The key here is to make sure that you turn in the whole opening by about a quarter of an inch and pin across. This fabric really sheds like crazy, so we don't want Kitty leaving her hair all around the house. Here's the sped up version of the ladder stitch, and I'm just going to hide my thread in the bum of the kitty cat. Right, now we need some limbs. So this is our second sock. We're going to turn it upside down and ultimately inside out. We have our leg pattern here, so I'm going to try and proportionally draw a limb that's going to kind of match for the arm. So I want it shorter than the leg, but if I set my cat down next to it, I'm just looking and I'm just going to roughly draw an arm. There we have it. That's all right, maybe a little bit thicker because we've got to remember we're going to be sewing right up against the edge of that. 
and they look good. They look in proportion. Yay, I think we're ready to go. Now for the ears. I'm not going to go too big on my ears. Um, at this point, I really wasn't thinking of a character doll um, or cat. So I'm just thinking cute little black cat for Halloween. And that's a good size. When I'm looking at the head, I'm thinking yes. But ultimately, if you want to make Gigi, which is what I realized I wanted to do, you want to make a bigger ear. Now for the tail. Again, I'm just eyeballing this with the body next to it. And we are literally going to sew right around the edge. All ready and set to sew. So with your sock upside down and the toe at the head, you're going to want to turn it inside out. Now we're going to lie out our pattern pieces, um, but this time we're going to keep the heel over to the side and we're going to line up the arm with the side of the sock. So this will be one of our arms. And then I'm just going to fiddle around and see where I can get the tail to go. Basically, I'm trying to utilize the side of the sock as much as possible. And maybe I can fit the ears here and flip that over, do the other side. Yes, I think this is great because then I can always use the top of the sock for another project down the road. So grab your pins and pin in your pattern pieces. I found the easiest way to sew these were to actually sew each limb and each ear individually and cut them out individually as soon as I'd finished sewing. It was so difficult to see the thread otherwise. And here we have them all sewn up. The tops of the limbs are kept open so that we can turn them. So take your trusty hemostats and uh, let's get turning. This fabric is super easy to turn. Yes, it does shed a lot, but it's very, very forgiving on shapes also. So now it's on to the stuffing. Um, fluff your stuffing like always and use your paintbrush to really firmly stuff the bottom of your limbs. Again, we've got that nice round bulbous shape that we're after. So uh, really uh, manipulate the stuffing inside the arm to create that. Stuff all the way up the arm, leaving a half an inch space at the top. We'll be turning the top over and sewing around it. So we need that space to be able to basically shove the excess material into. Don't stuff the ears, but do stuff the tail. Okay, so now we need to put our limbs either side of our kitty cat and our tail and the placement of our ears. And already she's kind of, or he's kind of coming alive. Grab your needle and thread and start sewing up one of the tops of the limbs. We're going to turn the top in by a quarter of an inch and sew around it. You can use quite large stitches around this and we are going to just literally cinch it all in and then shove all that excess material inside. And then we'll whip stitch across the top. You're really not going to see these stitches because of the fluffiness of this material. Repeat this process for the other arm and for the top of the tail. Now it's time for placement. You don't want the tops of these arms too high, otherwise you won't see Kitty's neck. So make sure that they are absolutely parallel on each side and just sort of play around with them. Once you're happy, grab your pins and pin them into place. Flip Kitty over and let's add the tail right just above the heel, so right above the bum really. <laughs> and now it's for the ears. I like to sort of open these up and stretch them out a little bit before I place them. Also, don't forget to turn over by about a quarter of an inch underneath because again, you don't want this material shedding everywhere when you give Kitty a cuddle. <laughs> Oh my goodness, already so cute. I'm really liking Gigi. Right, let's grab our needle and thread and let's whip stitch the top of the limbs on one by one and the tail. And then I'm going to actually sew around each ear, the front, the side and the back, just to make them look a little bit 3D, but without all of the stuffing. Right, let's talk about a face. Now you can use wool felt, you can use craft felt if it isn't going to be cuddled a lot, or you could even use the googly eyes from the dollar store. 
I'm going for Gigi from uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, the Studio Ghibli movie. And actually, these googly eyes would work really well. If you really don't like sewing, you could just grab your glue gun and stick them on. I'm actually going to use them as a template and uh, cut out two circles from my wool felt. You could also use fleece or um, even a soft minky. All of this is scrap that I just have in my sewing studio. Test it out on your kitty cat. I just grabbed a little half moon of a piece of wool felt and I think it's working really nicely for the shape of the inside of the eye. Take that and place it on your other piece of wool felt and basically use that as your template to cut out an identical piece for the other eye. Pop them on your cat. I like them quite close to the center near the nose which I forgot to tell you is literally a little triangle of pink felt. Pin them into place and then we are going to use matching thread to sew around the outside of each felt piece. If you're in a pinch you could use fabric glue but wait for it to dry overnight or of course the glue gun. With your matching thread and a double knot in the end we're going to sew around the outside. I'm just using the simple straight stitch. It's super easy and kids can do it also. Tie off with a secure stitch which is knotted at the end behind the felt piece and then thread it through the toy and snip it off. And we're all done, looking ever so cute. I think Gigi needs a little red bow around his neck though. Perfect, all done. I think he's lovely. I really hope you enjoy making one with me and I would love to see them if you would like to pop some links in the comments below or go over to my Dolls and Daydreams Facebook group and uh, post a photo on the wall. Whether it's Gigi or a little cute Halloween kitty cat, it's amazing what you can make out of a dollar sock. I hope you've enjoyed these sock stories today and that you've really enjoyed making yourself a new toy. Take care and very, very happy sewing.